Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. It was a, a cool weekend here, but we are going to be warming up for Thanksgiving. Looking forward to that. Uh, today we have a couple things to talk about. We're going to be talking about gifts that you could possibly make for uh, the loved ones. Uh, and uh, they will much more enjoy these gifts that you make than the uh, ones that you can buy. So I'm going to have a couple things that I gave through the years and made. Um, first off, I just wanted to talk about one of my favorite all time products. And the reason it came up, we were talking, uh, I was talking to one of my former scouts and we were talking about this, when we used to do survival courses. And, uh, I remember I used to have them pick out six items they would like to uh, bring if they were stuck on a deserted island. And, uh, they would ask me what were mine. And I always had one item on there that they would confuse them. And that is Vaseline. They were like, why would you put Vaseline on a list of survival items? And it just has so many uses. It has such an amazing history to it. Such a fantastic product for over 150 years. It's used everywhere. I'm sure you, everyone watching this has probably had experience with it. I use it every single day. And uh, I'm just a big fan. Let me tell you a little bit about this beautiful, wonderful product. Now, about 1860, Robert Augustus Chesborough was a young man in his 20s, a self-taught chemist, basically uneducated, but he loved chemistry. He used to work at refining whale oil to try and make a better type kerosene for the lanterns and things like that that were uh, popular at the time. Well, what happened was when uh, the, the petroleum industry did away with the sperm whale industry uh he went into he said well he saw the writing on the wall and he went to into the petroleum industry to try and find out how he could make a fortune in that again a young man he went to uh, travel to titusville pennsylvania that was the heart of the petroleum industry here in the northeast and uh and from there, he started working around the men at the, uh, he went right to the, where they were doing the pumping. And he was talking to the men and everything and trying to figure out how he can get one of these products to refine or to whatever. And he came up with something that he saw the men were wiping off the drill rods called rod wax. And it was kind of a, uh, a gummy substance, almost like a, uh, a grease like substance, but it was unusable to them. It, it wasn't, it was thrown away more or less useless, but he noticed that some of the men were wiping it on their hands and things like that. And he was asking why, and they said, because it, uh, it would make their hands softer and it would heal the cuts if they got any. So he took a couple buckets home to Brooklyn where he lived. And what he did was he started to refine it and work with it. And he came up with something that he called Vaseline. And uh, this was a refined petroleum product. And uh, what he did, the genius about this guy is he started giving away one ounce bottles to everybody. He would just walk up and down um, Manhattan and things like that and Brooklyn where he lived. And everybody he would see, he would give away one ounce bottles. Try this out. It's a good product. And, and then he used to stock the drugstores with this product. And uh, after they tried the one ounce, they were like, oh, this is great. So they went back and bought, m bought more. And within a few years, he was making so much Vaseline that they were saying it was selling one jar a minute in the United States here. And then he expanded around the world and it became worldwide phenomenon. This is one of the best products you can ever have, especially in a survival situation, because it's not only a great first aid cream, but it does a hundred different things. And I happen to always, my whole life, I've always had kind of dry lips, you know, like if I don't have some kind of chapstick or something, and there's nothing more annoying to me than having chapped lips. You know what I'm talking about? So I always, I use Vaseline every day, a little bit on my lips or whatever to keep them soft, but, or chapstick or whatever I might have. But if I was on a deserted island and I was getting sunburnt and I was, uh, if I was getting injuries, cuts or whatever, nothing is better as a topical ointment, better than Vaseline. And uh, that's why it was always in my first aid kit. But a uh, very interesting history. And if you ever, if I'm sure... Every one of you probably have a jar of this in your house or a derivative 
which something that's made with petroleum jelly. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. You know, interesting fact about Mr. Cheeseboro, he used to uh, injure him. He used to cut himself just to show the healing properties of his product. He also um, used to take it orally. He used to take a mouthful, a spoonful every day because he says that it, it just worked so well for all kinds of ailments. And he lived to 96 years old in a time when the average lifespan was under 60. It's just absolutely amazing. Great product. Uh, I just love it. So next up, uh, like I said, we want to talk about some of the things that you can give as gifts and some of the things you can make. And these are just some of the, the items that I made throughout the years. And maybe it'll give you an idea of something you might want to try or, or fabricate for some friends and family. Let's get right to that. Okay, this item was a little woodpecker. You can see how it's made. It's a, a block of wood. I used a piece of uh, copper pipe here with a little cap on top. And you can see what this is. It's a uh, just a ring, a wooden ring that's a little bit larger that it slides up and down here. And then a spring that's put into a body that I kind of just cut out and carved a little bit and then painted of a woodpecker. And how this works is you would raise this up all the way up. And then when you gave him a little push like this, you can see what happens. He, uh, <laughs> he winds up pecking all the way down. And sometimes he'll wrap around the pole. But uh, it takes a while for him to get to the bottom. Always love this. It's kind of whimsical. Um, it took a while to get to the, you know, to decide what kind of uh, materials I want to use. But I enjoyed the copper pipe. I just liked the way it looked. And it will, you know, work for a long time. It takes a while to get down. has a nice sound to it as he's pecking on there. So uh, pretty interesting, right? And everybody loved this thing, you know. Even though it's kind of a toy, a whimsical, but, you know, it works all the time. There's nothing to it. And all you need is the right spring. You know, you just get a pretty stiff spring and uh, drill it in, push it in. And there we go. So you might want to consider making some of them, especially if you have youngsters around. Next up, uh, birdhouses are always a, a nice gift to, to give and to receive. And these I showed a little while ago. These are made from the uh, PVC fence uh, posts, the six-inch fence posts that you see that uh, a lot of times they discard because they, they come in eight-foot lengths, so they cut like two feet off. And you'll see a bunch of these usually in the garbage, unused, that are about 15 or 18 inches, whatever the uh, discarded pieces are. So you grab them, and uh, this is all this is is one piece cut with a 45 up here, and then another piece cut down the edges here to make the roof. And uh, that's pretty much, that's all it is to it. And uh, I just make a bottom for it and put a hole in it. And uh, I put a little decal. These are vintage decals from the 60s. They used to be big. And then I clear coated over them so the, the weather doesn't get to them. But very nice uh, gifts. And I'll show you another, again, with the birdhouses. Now, years back, my girlfriend gave me this uh, beautiful birdhouse, like a log cabin type birdhouse. I don't know who made it or where it came from, but... What a beautiful job they did. And I said, boy, I like this, you know. So I said, I'm going to make my own variation using this design. And I made this here. I made about, I, I don't know, six or eight of them. And I made them out of just regular furring strips that you would get at Home Depot. And then all I needed was uh, some pine for the, uh, for the roof here. I did a, uh, a stain with my old green paint that's just wiped on with a rag you know to give it that look and uh this came out real nice again very easy to do just cut up a, a bunch of furniture the only thing is you had to chamfer the ends to make them look like logs and then build it as it goes up and a nice little project everybody loved it everybody was super happy getting these things a lot of them didn't even put them outside because they just liked them so much they left them in the house nice little idea for a holiday gift Okay, next up, this was something my mother had this, uh, one of these, hanging up in her house for many, many years. And I decided one time, I said, you know, I'm going to borrow that design again and make my own woodpecker door knocker. Now, you can see all this is is a uh, piece of wood that's cut down the middle here. And uh, you have to bore out a hole over here, put a little notch in here, and you cut out a woodpecker. And uh, how it works is you can see that string, and you can see this was number three of probably eight I made. 
and this string comes down to a little ball here. And what you do is you place this against a wall, uh, a door on the outside. When people want to come in, they pull on the string and it knocks onto the door. And uh, it's, it's kind of whimsical again. It's pretty interesting. Everybody liked it. You know, you hang this on the wall and as people walk by, they're always kind of pulling down on it, knocking. So uh, that I made a bunch of these. That was nice. Everybody liked these. Okay, now this simple gift was something I gave away years ago. Uh, uh, it's not long after my, this was my grandmother. And, and I remember taking this, I took this picture when I was into photography. I was in a photography club when I was a kid. And and uh, I took this picture of my grandmother in the kitchen. I said, Grandma, and she turned around and I said, I want to take a picture. And she just, you know, she wasn't one for taking pictures, you know. And I took this picture and that's the way we remembered her. She always looked like this, you know. And and so what I did was I developed it, you know, I developed it and I had it. And then I took photo, just regular photo stats and I got a couple, a bunch of frames from like Target or something. And I put the photo stat and I gave one to each one of my aunts and all the grandchildren and everything, you know, and I'll tell you something, this gift went over, everybody was so happy, and it was so nice, because if I ever visited them, I would always see this hanging in the kitchen or something as a remembrance, so if you get a good picture of somebody that passed on or something, or a good picture where they were happy, and the way you want to remember them, you put it in a frame, you give it to them, for. I'm telling you, fantastic gift, much better than something that you buy that, you know, you're just going to give them without much thought. Lovely gift. Here was another very popular and well-received gift and something I enjoyed making. I made up again about a half a dozen of these. Um, all this is, it's a squirrel feeder. And what happens is the squirrel, you put this on a tree, okay? It's mounted to a tree or, or and the squirrel comes up the tree, will go in here and you put your peanuts or whatever into this mason jar. And you can see I made a little spring release here using a door a uh, spring door hinge, you know, the type of spring door hinges that you have. I just bought a couple of those and you just, all you need is a hinge and you see that how you make it. This comes out here. You fill this with nuts, you know, or seed or whatever. You put it in here like this, this holds it. And then what happens when the squirrel enters the little house, you'll see his little head popping in and out here, grabbing the seeds. It's fun to watch. Again, everybody liked it. These are only good for a couple of years if you make them like this because they're wood. Now, if you wanted it to last longer, you'd have to put some kind of shingling over the top. You'd have to make this out of a, a cedar or redwood or some kind of wood that would hold up to the elements. But something like this is only good for a couple of years because it's pine, but it's inexpensive, cheap to make. And even if they get one good season out of it, both the squirrels and them really get a kick out of this. So nice little gift. Okay, so in closing, uh, there's a few ideas. Maybe it'll help you come up with uh, maybe an, an original idea of things you can make for your friends and family. I'm telling you, it goes over really well compared to something you would buy. Um, and Vaseline, is that not one of the best inventions ever? It's got to be up there in the top 10, you know? It's what a great, everybody uses it. Everybody loves it. Just a fantastic item. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.